But in order to transform a market as a leader, you can't rest. You can't look backwards. You always have to be leading. And that's what you've seen us do over the past 100 days. First, on November the 1st, you saw us announce Project Moonshot. It's really all about redefining the architectures of servers, delivering extreme low energy computing for the scale of the web. Fundamentally different architecture. Second, in November, you saw us launch Project Odyssey. And Project Odyssey was really about delivering a unified mission critical platform that for the first time on one platform allowed Linux, Windows, and Unix to operate as one unit, one system. And so Project Odyssey is really about bringing mission critical computing to our Linux and Windows customers. And only HP can do that. And today, I'm incredibly pleased to announce the third phase of our mission to transform the server market, and that's Project Voyager. Project Voyager is really about building servers that redefine the economics and efficiency of the data center. It's all about really re-architecting the mainstream servers so that they're ready for the scale that the cloud era needs. In many ways, you have to think about Voyager as probably our boldest mission ever. The reason being is because this problem is a huge problem for our customer around manual operations, around the complexity of configuring systems. If you look at just a typical data center, 10,000 square feet, $50 million over three years in manual operations and facilities expenses. Those manual operations also generate a lot of errors, and those errors result in unplanned downtime. Unplanned downtime can cost our customers $10 million an hour. So it was important when we started Project Voyager over two years ago for us to completely rethink the architecture of an industry standard server and deliver a breakthrough capability that helps our customer deal with it. But the bigger story here and the backdrop is the fact that with the scale of the cloud and the amount of data growth, we had to fundamentally do something different. If you think about it, the next 60 seconds, 175,000 pictures will be uploaded. In the next 60 seconds, users will be searching for information with 200 million plus searches. The amount of data growing in data centers around the world will more than quadruple in the next few years, driving demand for thousands and thousands of new servers every single day. And so these manual operations and the way the data centers were managed was unsustainable. And Project Voyager was really all about creating a brand new architecture to address this issue, to create an architecture and a breakthrough new set of capabilities to deal with this issue. And so today, I'm very, very pleased to be able to announce to you the brand new Proliant Gen 8 servers with the proactive insight architecture. This architecture built into every single Proliant server embedded gives the intelligence and the automation and the capability for these servers to virtually manage themselves. It's based on thousands and thousands of interviews with customers all around the world. It has hundreds of customer-inspired innovations built right in. In this architecture, we filed over 900 patents and they're embedded inside these new servers. We're connecting this intelligence in more ways than ever. We're connecting the intelligence of this new architecture to the admins. We're connecting it to the apps to make them run faster. We're connecting it to the data center to free up trapped capacity and make data centers run more efficiency, efficiently. And we're connecting it to services to automate everything about the life cycle of these servers. And all of this is built on 22 years of insight. So let's take a look at what this delivers. The new proactive insight architecture delivers breakthrough capabilities. If you look at it, triple admin productivity, three times all the intelligence built right in 
allowing admins to spend their time not on day-to-day -day routine maintenance of servers, but on innovating, breaking through on storage with over six times greater bandwidth and I.O. in the storage subsystem, a brand new architecture. As a matter of fact, storage is one of the leading bottlenecks of applications today. And with this new architecture and this new smart storage capability that we've built in, we have the ability to really dramatically break that log jam. New, industry unique 3D CS sensors, servers that know exactly where they are in the data center and understand the power that they're connected to, understand the cooling around them, and understand the location they're in the server, allowing for the first time automation around the complete energy management of the data center and intelligent workload provisioning. And then finally, integrated support automation, delivering 66% faster problem resolution and cloud-based management so that our customers and our channel partners have anywhere, anytime access to know exactly what's going on with their server, whether it's a small customer or the largest enterprise. The net result of all this, an incredible five months return on investment. Our customers are able to deploy these servers and they will pay back in five months. As important, these servers will also deliver up to 30 days back of admin time for every admin per year. So wouldn't it be nice rather than admins supervising servers, they're able to free up their time to apply it to the innovation that their companies need. And then with all the technology we built in this brand new architecture, we're able to actually double the data center capacity by deploying these servers. And this five months is just compared to the latest generation of ProLiant server. And as we move forward and next generation processing architectures are put in it, it only gets better. So this new proactive insight architecture is really a breakthrough. So let's take a closer look at some of the capabilities. These servers are so smart they're gonna virtually take care of themselves. They have all the intelligence built in. 100% of the software agentless, you plug it in, you power it on, it's ready to be managed. Startup in three seconds, telling what's going on, tracking over 1,600 different parameters in an active health system so that customers know always what's going on with the servers. This helps resolve problems faster, optimize systems, and it's not just about the intelligent provisioning built in, it's also about being able to always easier maintain these servers across the entire life cycle. So new smart updates allow for one click updates of one server or a thousand servers and all the software and firmware needed. So that's exactly the kind of breakthroughs and the kind of technology our customers need to deal with the manual processes in the data center. When you look at it, we had one admin, one stopwatch, and 32 servers. This is the compare with the proactive insight architecture in Gen 8 and the new and the proactive uh, insight architecture in Dell servers. So you see it's dramatic difference in the amount of time. From five minutes, for five hours, down to 10 minutes. But it's not just about doing things faster. It's really about doing things better. And that's what this architecture is all about. Wouldn't it be nice if an architecture allowed 20 years of knowledge and all the capability that comes out of HP Labs to be accessed seamlessly from a mobile app? And for example, to deploy all the configuration settings, all the application settings, the OS settings, to optimize that server with a simple mobile app, a click, and deploy. That's the intelligence we're building in to these servers. And that's exactly the kind of simplicity and connection of our engineers to the admin that we've built in to this proactive insight architecture. The next area that we really worked on and had major breakthroughs is the storage area. 
I told you, is a leading cause of bottlenecks for applications. We've built in incredible acceleration and dynamic workload uh, knowledge right into the smart storage subsystem. With intelligent caching, we deliver 50% better performance for online transaction workloads. We're the first in the industry with generation three IO and deliver the performance needed for the kind of IO breakthroughs that these new applications need. We've optimized the memory subsystem. The new smart memory and the algorithms we've put in there not only allow us to run the memory 25% faster, delivering the greatest application performance, but we have smart algorithms that reduce and eliminate the most common memory failures, allowing the most availability of the server to continue running that application at the highest performance. And we've changed the entire architecture to get rid of all the batteries in the system. And why does that matter? Because batteries have to be changed every couple of years. We have right back cache that has doubled in capacity and we've removed all the batteries. We've merged solid state technology and incredibly high performance memory such that we're able to accelerate all I.O. and deliver persistence of that data in that cache regardless of what happens to the server. So no more changing batteries and servers, and also no more having to rush to the data center if you've had a power failure. This is unique in the industry, and only HP can deliver it with this new architecture. The result, six times faster I.O. You think about it, a server that out of the box has a capability to run up to 500,000 IOs per second. That's staggering amount of performance. In a rack, 10 million IOs per second. And so you can imagine our partners, Microsoft, SAP, and others are incredibly excited to be able to get their hands and optimize their applications on this new architecture the proactive, with the proactive insight built in. We've also added a lot of data availability, not only around the new write cache architecture, but also we added new RAID capability that increases availability in the highest performing configurations by up to 1,000%, allowing your drives to sustain two drive failures and even bit errors and us continue to deliver the kind of data throughput and availability our customers need for those most demanding workloads. Next, we really thought about how we can free up the stranded capacity in the data center for the first time, give admins and facilities teams deep insight across the data center. Our new GPS for servers is really an industry first. You plug the server into the rack, it identifies where it is and lets the admin know exactly what's going on. Not only does it let the admin know the location in the data center, but it also checks the power config and completely maps out the topology of the power for the facilities. Why is that important? One of the most common errors in the data center is the plugging in of servers with redundant power onto the same circuit. You need different circuits to maintain complete redundancy. We eliminate that common mistake with our intelligence built in, with our new PDUs and our new power supplies. It's about delivering more efficiency, 94% platinum plus power supplies. These are some of the most efficient power supplies on the industry, and when you plug them in, they automatically discover the power topology and report it back. So you've got location, you've got power, and now we also have all of the cooling and the thermal in the data center. So the first time with our 3D CS sensors, an admin and facilities teams can look across the data center and say, where do I have space available? Where do I have power available? Where do I have cooling available? And where does it make sense to place this workload? Being able to place it in the most optimal location to leverage the capacity in the data center. Second, we've added rack-based power capping and intelligence in every single rack. And what that means is we're able to track and monitor the actual power usage of that application in that 
that rack, and no more does an admin and a facilities team have to over-provision power. It's a very common thing. They're not sure how much power. We'll actually track it, let them see exactly how much power, and we will cap it at, let's say, 100% of its maximum use that we've ever seen, and that allows the admins and the facilities teams to take that extra power that was allocated to that rack and use it elsewhere to do what? To deal with the continued growth and the demands of IT. So the breakthrough technologies and all these are unique to HP. And when you look at it, what this delivers is for the first time, this 3D sea of sensors that we've built in with this proactive insight architecture gives you and our customers the ability to have energy aware workload placement and we can visualize a complete data center around power, around cooling, as well as around location. Unique. We deliver two times 2x the data center capacity back. We're able to put 70% more compute for every watt than what we've been able to do in previous generations. So these are the kinds of breakthrough technologies that every data center needs and every customer around the world needs to deal with the scale of the cloud era. Next, I want to talk about the great collaboration that we've had across this program, Project Voyager, with services. And so to join me on the stage to talk about the breakthroughs around the automated capability we built in here is Antonio Neri, Senior Vice President and General Manager of HP Technology Services. Thank Antonio, thank, thank you. Thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are around the globe. Mark and I have been working on this project for the last two years in a very tight collaboration. We have two guys from Texas. I'm sure you recognize my Texan accent by now. But the reality is that we have really worked hard to really transform the customer service experience around the data center. So today is a very proud day for us. and glad to be here to walk you through how we did this. So, the HP Proactive Inside Architecture gives us an enormous amount of capabilities. By bringing together the HP server power and the service experience to deliver a customer experience second to none. My passion, HP passion, is to define and deliver leading customer experiences. This is why with this introduction, we have trained thousands of HP experts around the globe to support this new set of products. And they are back with local expertise, which are part of our HP Service One program. Together, we will be transforming the industry. Now, all this intelligence allow us to introduce what we call the HP Inside Online, a true cloud-based support portal where we take advantage of the embedded capabilities and aggregate all that information for our customers, our partners, and our HP experts to access the information as fast as we can. These include active system health, health, our service events, our warranty information, and our contract information, which allow us to really cut through the hassle of manual steps and really reduce the time to resolve customer problems. This solution is also designed for our Service One partners because in this portal we have a dedicated section for our Service One partners, which we call My Customers, which allows them to access the customer information if they allow them to do so and really look at their environment, what the alerts are, and solve customer problems faster. As Mark said, these, these services are so intelligent that really redefine the service experience. Because of all this intelligence, we are able to prevent and solve problems before they happen. Now, HP Inside Online, together with our world-class HP Insta support, which we call it instant uh, remote support, allow us now to really provide real-time monitoring 24 by 7 and be very accurate about the problems that the server may encounter and provides real-time information back on the hands of the people that need to know. Example, HP experts, customers to mobile devices, and as well as our Service One partners. All of this 
allow us to really service automate the entire experience because everybody in that step of the process will have accurate, reliable information for them to focus on the problem and try to solve it as quick as we can. In fact, we believe with this new ecosystem, we can cut through the problems, eliminate at least 50% of the problems before it happens, and also help address the problems 66% of the time much faster. Because of this intelligence, we're also designing new proactive services. And one of the key features around proactive services is the single point of contact, which means customers and partners can access one person to help solve the problems as fast as we can. So that's another true benefit. Instead of going through the hassle of going through IVRs, telephone, and whatnot, this is now one single point of contact we go through. And last but not least, because this is extensible to our channel partners, our service one partners, they will have also the ability to access the same information, which means they also can capture value added opportunities and also analyze the data from the systems and create upsell opportunity for themselves. That is therefore focusing on the entire IT life cycle. As Mark said, we are here on a mission, which is to transform this industry. This new set of capabilities with our channel partners, with our HP experts, will be the driving force to transform this industry. The numbers are pretty staggering. As you can see, with the new capabilities we have in place, we can now save 90% in support tasks. We can solve problems 66% faster, but also at the same time, our accuracy on delivering the solution goes way up because the telemetry, the intelligence, the product allow us to really focus on the root cause of the problem. And we can achieve 95% first time fix. And last but not least, a very important aspect of all of this is to drive a real time, close loop feedback between our infrastructure, customers, partners, our experts, all the way back into the labs with the same information, reliable information that allow us to focus on new innovation as we go forward. And in fact, when we talk about innovation, Mark, maybe we should talk about some of the innovation that we, we drove in this yeah, process. You know, uh, we talk about interviewing thousands of customers around the world and over 150 customer-inspired innovations in those 900 patents into this new architecture. We're just going to talk about a couple of those innovations that really kind of are a testament to the attention to detail and the, the kind of passion the engineers put into this product to think of everything. And one of them is the new HP Smart Socket. The Smart Socket really uh, allows us to address the number one cause of system board failures today. And it's an industry-wide problem. System board have incredible uh, uh, amount of pins required to mate up with a new processor. And a customer or a channel partner installing an upgrade for a customer has a, a very high likelihood of actually damaging those pins when installing the processor. And so looking at this with partnering with Intel, we totally redesigned the entire socket. And this new smart socket eliminates that and prevents this from happening. But more important, customers no, no longer with HP servers will have this issue. The failure can manifest itself a couple of different ways in the industry. One is a server will no boot. Second is, which is even worse, it could potentially have flaky or intermittent application errors causing downtime. HP has addressed this completely with this new smart socket and it's only on the Gen 8 servers from HP. And I can tell our technicians are very happy because now they have a true solution for them to really fix the problem in the appropriate way. The other true innovation we drove is the smart drive. The number one cause for data loss on a service configuration is when there is a human error, which means you know technicians go on site and tend to pull the wrong drive because they don't have good understanding, good visibility of which drive has failed based on the visibility of the leg. So with the new technology we have put in, now we can really pinpoint 
which drive we need to remove and don't pull out active drives which causes data corruption and data loss. So those are true examples of the innovation we drove. Very good. But Mark, I will let you wrap. Okay. This is an exciting day. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Antonio, today. I appreciate the appreciate partnership. It. Thank you. So as you can see between the services engineering team and the product engineering teams, a lot of breakthroughs and these customer innovations are built into everything. And so when I talk about how we're delivering this, only HP can deliver it across a complete portfolio of products. From SMB, giving them the simplicity and the ease, the local support, and all the understanding that their business needs and linking them directly to the channel partners, as Antonio says. From the enterprise, compelling economics, being able to update one or a thousand servers with one click and bringing the expertise of the HP labs right into the enterprise and SMBs, and then the cloud, all the dimensions you want, provisioning, app data performance, built-in intelligence. We've designed servers for the entire market with this Gen 8 launch, with this new proactive insight architecture that virtually take care of themselves. And that's exactly the kind of innovation that you would expect from the leader, addressing the biggest pain points that our customers have. And so now what I would like to do, rather than you just hear from myself and Antonio, I'd like to invite a panel up of a customer, a channel partner, as well as an analyst, so you can hear from them. So with that, I'd like to invite Chuck Smith, Vice President, HP Blades and ISS, Thanks, to be Mark. a moderator. And then I'd also like to invite uh, Chris Corley from CDW, channel partner. Chris is a Senior Vice President of Corporate Sales at CDW. Jeff Corley from Alcatel Lucent. Jeff's the Vice President of Product Management at Alcatel Lucent. And Richard Pachera. Richard is the Vice President and Senior Research Analyst at Forrester. So Chuck, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Great, thanks Mark. Well, welcome everybody. And as Mark said, it's great for us to get a perspective from key stakeholders, not just here from HP. So let's start with you, Jeff. Well, we should start with the customer. So Jeff, tell us a little bit about your role at Alcatel Lucent um, and, and uh, how you use the servers. Um, in, your, in your solution? Sure, so um, Alcatel Lucent, we're a uh, network equipment manufacturer. So we sell uh, communications networking infrastructure to all the service providers around the globe. So this would be companies like AT&T, Verizon, China Mobile, et cetera. Um, it's a very uh, broad and diverse portfolio, products like radio network controllers, uh, large database applications, real-time uh, rating, billing, and analytics. Uh, but across all those systems, there's a common set of requirements to support tens of millions of subscribers, uh, thousands of transactions a second, and zero downtime. So my team's role is uh, to define the product strategy, the um, uh, product roadmaps, and manage the P&L across that uh, portfolio. Great, great. Well, Chris, uh, tell us a little bit about your role at, at uh, CDW, and tell us a little bit about the, the pain points or the feedback you get from customers uh, every day when you're in your interactions. Sure. Uh, well, at CDW, I run the corporate division uh, focused on customers. Uh, and I would say CDW supports a wide range of customers, from the very small business to the very large enterprise customer, as well as customers across different segments, so corporate customers, I manage the corporate side, but we also support government, education, and healthcare. And while we support a diversity of customers, uh, their challenges are all very similar. And I think they generally fall into three major areas. Uh, first, they're always looking to reduce costs and improve the return on their investment, especially uh, with the economy the last few years, it's become even increasingly important. Uh, second, they're always looking to improve their infrastructure from both an avail availability and a performance perspective. Uh, and then I think third, um, more than ever before, they're looking to add real business value to their organizations, not to just be a utility provider, but to actually have strategic impact and to be viewed as a strategic partner in the business. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they spend most of their time managing their environment, uh, leaving little time for working on optimizing the environment and even less time uh, on innovation. Uh, so that's a big challenge I think they struggle with. Great. Mm -hmm. So Rich, when you think about, uh, and you talk to, to CIOs and uh, IT leaders uh, every day, 
tell us a little bit about um, what they're talking about, what they're telling you, and specifically in this area of uh, unplanned downtime and manual tasks and the administration of infrastructure. Okay. Uh, you know, as, as you know, Chuck, I spend my time, I sort of divide it between doing research on converged infrastructure and uh, data center architecture and uh, general infrastructure operational issues and doing a lot of consulting and talking with a lot, a lot of our end user clients. And uh, Christina basically summarized it very succinctly. They are consumed with issues of control and cost. And in recent years, as the industry has driven down the cost of the capital, what's happened is all of a sudden OPEX is top of everybody's mind. Uh, both OPEX uh, from power, we've reached a sort of a, an interesting point at which the lifetime power consumption of an average server is getting very close to its acquisition cost. And then the, the ongoing manual, uh, generally manual um, management of these servers, the, the routine move ads changes, the initial installation, um, these consume a lot of time. And despite all the discussion in the industry about automation and automated management frameworks, most people, if they're lucky, they have a single console that they can attach successively one after another after another uh, to the servers. And some people still walk around with, with media. Um, so yeah, manual operations consume a huge amount of time. It's a big issue. Uh, the ongoing issue of having to constantly optimize the infrastructure. Typically, people want to do anything to avoid a new data center. So the the successive optimization of the data center, the uh, you know installation of new hardware that will get more throughput on the, in the same footprint, those are all constant ongoing things. And very few IT people go around boasting about having much bigger budgets every year. So they're being asked to do this to add business value and do it in what is basically a, an almost flat budget. Um, so they spend a lot of time on that. They spend a tremendous amount of time planning downtime. Uh, they also occasionally suffer catastrophic downtime. And as Mark said, it costs a lot of money. Most businesses spend much more money on planned downtime than they do on unplanned downtime because they do a pretty good job managing their environment. But you know, unplanned downtime is a catastrophe and planned downtime is, and, and management is just a constant headache. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been hearing this consistently out across every segment of our client base for a decade, at least. Well, no, it's, I, I guess it's the perspective that we share, as you saw from the presentation, Jeff. When you think about um, you know, why HP, and specifically why um, ProLiant Generation 8, I know your, your team has had some uh, exposure to the platform's uh, um, you know, early availability. Tell us a little bit about uh, both HP and then the, the ProLiant Gen 8. Well, I think. Um, you know, one of the big reasons why we're partnering with HP is when they shared their vision for uh, Project Moonshot, Voyager, Odyssey, et cetera, it was clear that they really got it in terms of, you know, what my customers are, are concerned about is total cost of ownership. So, you know, most of the vendors are going to stay current with the technology in terms of processor performance, et cetera, but the fact that HP is looking holistically at, you know, not only the price performance, but the uh, energy consumption and management. And you know, Mark mentioned the, the, the smart architecture. And, and it's very true that a lot of the um, reasons why you have outages in the communications network is because of human error. So the, the fact that you can eliminate a lot of the human error for text going out and, and touching the equipment. And then, and then the other benefit that, that we get is in terms of by simplifying and automating a lot of the configuration and setup, that allows us to do an upgrade across you know, all the nodes in a very broad communications network in fewer maintenance windows. So consequently, that means that our customers can get new capability out to their customers sooner, which means they're, they're driving cash uh, quicker. So you know, like I said, when we're, when we're responding to bids and we can create a competitive advantage around the total cost of ownership and time to revenue, for our customers, that, that creates a, uh, uh, a good opportunity for us to win more business. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, we've got this week HP's Global <laughs> Partner Conference here in Las Vegas. And Chris, just give us a little perspective on your view on uh, um, partners and what the benefits that the Project Voyager, uh, the proactive inside architecture, as well as Gen 8 will have on, on partners and their business models. Um, I think it's really important that we've thought through that 
um, as an aspect of this project. Um, as one of HP's largest server partners, uh, we're delighted about the new architecture. We think it's not just a step level upgrade, it's a whole new evolution of the server technology, uh, which is a great discussion for us to be able to have with our customers. Um, and it's one of the things I think we like most about it is uh, it's not just about the technology innovation, and although clearly there's a lot of technology innovation, I think 900 patents is quite impressive, um, but the technology is not there for technology's sake, it's really there to meet the requirements of our customers. And that's what we're in business to do, so that's a very exciting conversation for us to have with them. Um, and I think if you look at really everything HP did with the server, something as specific as the smart socket to something as broad as being able to manage your warranty and your inventory with Insight Online, um, it seems like HP's really thought of everything with this one, so we're really excited to, to take it. Great. Forward. So, Rich, when you think about uh, you know, how we've looked at intelligence and automation of the servers, Give us your perspective on that, and then and think about how that uh, extends to you know the future of the, the server industry, and uh, you know how those are related, and, and we can talk through you know what that means for the industry. Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to uh, register a uh, request that you don't make the servers too smart, because then people like me might be out of a job, um, as well as some of the IT people you normally sell to, and you've got to be careful about that. But aside from Frankenstein, Frankensteinian servers. Um, it's pretty clear to me, you know, if I look back at, you know, my tenure in this industry, this whole Gen 8 announcement answers pains that I've been hearing from customers across all of the vendors for a decade. Uh, you know, the, the automation of the installation process and the firmware management and the inside online service capability are huge wins. And right now, they, they appear to me to be unique in the industry. So in terms of setting a direction of raising the bar, these are going to be immensely difficult things for other people to duplicate. Uh, in terms of the future of the server business, um, short of a complete, global, you know, an asteroid striking the Earth, uh, there's nothing that shows, that indicates there's going to be any slowdown in demand for servers. I, I, and seriously, I routinely talk to customers who tell me they've got legitimate business problems that need 10 to 100 times the CPU cycles that they can sustain today. So there's an immense you know, unpent up demand for servers. And I think the future of the server on a technical side, you know, faster silicon, uh, extended flat fabric architectures, more automation like, like you're doing here, uh, and increasingly online serviceability and, and, and more intelligent optimization applied at a system level. That's great. Well, we appreciate that feedback. You know, when you think about um, what we've done with Project Voyager and ProLiant Gen 8, just incredible innovations. I want to thank our panel uh, very much for coming up and giving us your perspectives uh, on the industry and the benefits we bring to this. So I'm going to bring Mark Potter back up uh, for some closing comments. So thank you very much, Gary, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rich. Jeff, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. All right, well, as you can see, you know, the things that we focus on.